We know that George Papadopoulos has now agreed to cooperate with Special Counsel Mueller. And keep in mind, he was on no one's radar screen until the guilty plea was unveiled. And that tells me that Special Counsel Mueller knows a lot about facts and circumstances surrounding the Russia investigation. And he's not letting people know what he knows until public documents come out with indictments and guilty pleas. And I expect next year to see more indictments coming. Well, earlier we played a part of my interview with that New York Times reporter, uh, Matt Apuzo. He talks about uh, the repeated attempts by Russians to use Papadopoulos as a way to get into the Trump campaign. And over the last few months, we learned that the Russians have been reaching out to the Trump campaign even after that June 2016 meeting at Trump Tower with Don Jr. Jared Kushner here. But how, how significant is this revelation about Papadopoulos, especially we see him, you know, uh, painted as this coffee boy was a volunteer, but now we also are learning that, that he edited, you know, an outline of, of President Trump's foreign policy speech. You know, he set up a meeting with the Egyptian president. It's significant because it does show that what Donald Trump and his allies are trying to do, saying this is some sort of democratic witch hunt, is false. The FBI investigation started because one of our most trusted allies, the Australians, told us a Trump campaign official knew that the Russians had thousands of stolen emails from the Democrats. And that leads to all sorts of questions, such as who else in the Trump campaign knew? What did the Trump campaign do with this information? That's what Special Counsel Mueller is investigating. Now, when it comes to the attacks uh, against the FBI from the president and the GOP and, and how those are escalating uh, against the FBI, do you think that all these, these revelations put that in, in any kind of perspective? I think it continues to show that the FBI is composed of dedicated and patriotic men and women who base their investigations and their actions on the evidence and the facts. And keep in mind, the FBI director, Christopher Wray, has given over $39,000 exclusively to Republican candidates. I still trust them because it's demeaning to say somehow that FBI officials can't do their jobs just because they have political opinions. All of us have political opinions. Congressman, I want to ask you about my conversation uh, with Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen about the following tweet that he wrote this morning. He says, quote, he golfs, talking about the president, when he could be reading or be in church or be with his family. Never see him with Barron. You think he'd be golfing with dad occasionally, but narcissists only engage in activities where they are the show. No movies, sports viewing, either just Fox. He will start a war. All right, so, so do you endorse that kind of rhetoric from your Democratic colleague, or, or is he crossing a line here, bringing in the president's son in the picture in, in order to criticize him? I don't mind if the president of the United States golfs. I do mind when he misleads American people about it, because keep in mind, Donald Trump tweeted that he was going to go right back to work the next day, and that wasn't really true. He went golfing for a lot more days. So I think it's fine to point out uh, his inconsistencies, and that's something that we in Congress need to do, is to be a check yeah. and balance on the president. How about bringing up Baron Trump, his son? Uh, I can't speak to my colleagues. I know that is I it do not talk about, I don't personally talk about relatives. Um, Was it I off limits on his thing. part? Um, you know, you'll have to ask him. Which we did. All right. Uh, I want to ask you about last month, uh, the Cohen, uh, the Representative Cohen, <clears throat> pardon me, introduced articles of impeachment. But Politico was reporting that Democrats are divided over the impeachment debate uh, in, in, if the party manages to, to retake the House next year. So do you see any risk there if there is no bipartisan approval? I think impeachment is one of the gravest responsibilities of Congress similar to our ability to declare war. It is not something we should ever do as a first option. It must be done based on the facts and the evidence. And I think we need to let special counsel Mueller's investigation play out. It may be a very easy question for us at the end of the investigation as to what Congress should do. Yeah, and certainly a lot on the plate uh, in the new year, the upcoming week, especially when it comes to DACA, the fight over immigration reform. Uh, you've got congressional leaders who are expected to meet with White House officials on Wednesday. The president's not going to be there. But you saw President Trump's tweet Friday telling Democrats, no border wall, no DACA. Uh, why would he say that when, when he knows it's a non-starter for Democrats and members of his own party when they want to protect the DACA recipients? I don't know why the president would tweet that out, because, first of all, the Republicans control Congress, they control the White House, they can pass any legislation they want without needing Democratic votes. But the currency on Capitol Hill is votes. So if they don't have their own votes together, then they need to come to Democrats. And if they want my vote, he's going to have to change the terms of that deal, because I'm not going to support what he laid out. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.